again, you can't just run out and steal somebody's pocketbook, right? That's called theft. You go to jail. You can't run out and steal somebody's car. That's called theft. You go to jail. Well, why is trading any different? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Cheers. So let's talk about the market. Uh, before we talk about uh, today's session, it, it, the more I was thinking about it today, as I was picking up my, my iced coffee, I was just getting angrier and angrier at myself. So there was a lot of really aggressive pivots today, and we'll get to the pivots in a second. And the NASDAQ 100 did exactly what we talked about, what we needed to see happen yesterday, right? Qs got rejected yesterday in the five, the 10 day moving average, and today we reclaim it. That's great, right? We'll talk about that all in a second. That's very, very bullish. I, I, I wanna talk about self, self control, right? I wanna talk about self control. I wanna talk about uh, the biggest enemy on the planet. It's not the market, okay? I don't care what the market can do to you, okay? What you think the market can do to you, okay? Which you're, with, with the nonsense, with the market makers, with the algorithms that they, they're controlling, nobody's controlling anything. It's, it's you versus the market. There's nothing the market can do to you, to you that you can't do to yourself. And today was a perfect example of completely putting yourself in a situation that you completely omitted the data in front of you and completely stabbed yourself in the throat but here's the crazy part. You knew it was about to happen. And we talk about this all the time, how important these pivots are, how very, very specific supply and demand zones are. And when you, when I look back in the day, or excuse me, when I look back at this trade, if you guys remember yesterday, I really liked Tesla today. Okay, I, I really did. And I was waiting for this channel. We talked about it last night. I was waiting for this channel to confirm. I put the prices on the on the feed. I put the prices in the webinar. Like I put the prices everywhere. And the most important part was I tried to get cute. I was feeling myself, right? I tried to get cute. I tried to steal a trade. I tried to anticipate what was about to happen. And the moral of the story is it cost me some, you know, it cost me a good chunk of change. And the more I think about it, the angrier I become. And it's not because of the money. Well, it's always because of the money. But it's all about self-control, okay? There's laws. There's rules in society that we follow, okay? Again, you can't just run out and steal somebody's pocketbook, right? That's called theft. You go to jail. You can't run out and steal somebody's car. That's called theft. You go to jail. Well, why is trading any different? When, when these specific numbers are there for you to take advantage of, of the channel, right? Take advantage of the interval. And when you try to steal, right, an entry or try to be cute, you're only going to have one thing happen. It's always going to be a problem. And the one time that you think you did something right by pure accident, that's when you're going to start building up bad habits. So today, you know, I, I looked at Tesla this morning. I said, look, we're going to start confirming macro. I believe there's going to be a channel all the way up to 700. But let me be cute about it, right? Let me be cute. And when you look at the feed today, there was a very, very specific number there, right? Very specific number. So here was the pivot yesterday. If you guys remember, there was the initial 650 pivot on Tesla, and then there was a 657. I said, look, there's supply at 661. And this morning, right, this morning, um, I turned around, I go, look, 663 needs to reclaim yesterday's channel, right? Which is true. Again, we needed a second entry. But this was the macro area that I really needed to concentrate on. And 99% of the time, I would be very, very diligent. I would never cheat. But again, it proves we're all human. We all bleed. We all laugh. We all have brain farts. And today was my brain fart on, on the stock. I knew that 666, 67 is going to be a monster area, really monster area. And the funny part is when I was, when I was talking about the setup in the webinar today, I said, you know what, guys? Although, you know, we, we need that 67, I, I think we could steal that pre-market high, but the only problem is it should stall out at least initially at 665, right? I knew this. It wasn't like I was walking to an alley completely blindfolded, not knowing what to expect. I knew there was supply at 665, and yet the fart, the mental fart, the humanity came out of me. 
I still did it. And what do you think happened, right? The stock spiked up about a dollar and then right away lost $3 in a matter of absolute seconds. So the moral of the story is, folks, technical analysis is there for a reason, okay? It's there for a reason. It's not supposed to be uh, some beautiful picture that you're supposed to sensationalize and romance and trying to explain to somebody stocks are either going to take out supply or they're not. Do not steal entries. You know, I have brain farts three, four times a year. Today was my brain fart, right? I knew the 665 was going to be supply, and yet I still did it. And again, folks, before you start blaming everything around you, the market, the market makers, the algorithms, social media, my mother-in-law, my, my neighbor's dog, my pet snake, remember, it's all in front of you. We all have a level playing field. I knew there was supply at 665, and for some goddamn reason, I still click the mouse and yada, 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 you know, crap hit the fan. So the moral of the story is, folks, don't cheat. Don't try to get cute. Don't steal entries. If the number is X, X is the number. It's not X, Y, Z or, or O. X is the number. You got to stay disciplined. Again, obviously, I will be extra disciplined tomorrow. Uh, and the most ironic part was this was the only channel of the whole day that didn't work, right? And obviously, this is always my, my strongest play. It's always my favorite stock yada, yada, yada. I started the day not the best way possible. And ironically, again, market is uh, really good. So kids, again, if you're listening at home, you're watching at home, don't cheat on your entries. Trust me. Don't anticipate. We talk about this all the time. This today is like one of those scenarios, as do as I say, not as I do. But in all seriousness, don't cheat on the entries. I, I promise you nine and a half out of 10 times, you're going to get blown out of the water. There's absolutely no reason for it. There's so much expansion on these channels. There's absolutely no reason to be cute and try to beat, try to outsmart the market. The market, it will never be outsmarted. It'll only put you in your place. And today was a really, really humbling experience. Not that it's an end of the world, you know, huge financial uh, downside, but the point is I knew it was about to happen. I still did it, yada, yada, yada. Again, I'm still talking about it. So hopefully, again, I'm definitely gonna learn my lesson for tomorrow. Is it gonna happen again? Absolutely, it always happens. It happens to me once a quarter, once every other quarter, today was the day uh, it so happened. But again, if you look at the overall spectrum of the market, the market continues to be good. Uh, as we talked about last night in the video, uh, the 10 day moving average, need, today was a really, really big kind of sink or swim moment uh, for, uh, especially the NASDAQ 100. Uh, yesterday, it got rejected at the 10-day moving average. Again, if you've, if you've ever heard anything come out of my mouth, you kind of know that it's incredibly important that the 10-day gets confirmed. Uh, although the five-day moving average is the shortest term of sentiment, the 10-day moving average is the birth of the trade. And today uh, was a perfect example of how strong the market is. It tested it pre-market, it tested it again, they sold it off, they remounted it, they brought it back and they re reclaimed uh, the 10-day moving average on the close, which is super duper bullish uh, going into tomorrow's session. So now, unless there's some really big exaggerated curveball, you know, that hits the market, right? Some sort of news in the next uh, 24 hours or so, we should start, remember, it's not a macro effect that every stock is gonna start screaming. But slowly but surely, if you, if you reference that May 20th area, that 50-day moving average, if you guys remember, the NASDAQ 100 went first, and then slowly but surely, you started seeing stocks confirm, right? Macro, you guys remember? Amazon, NVIDIA, Apple, Facebook, slowly but surely, everything started confirming. So this is the first day, baby step, that we are above supply. So we start should start seeing a lot of value for tomorrow. And look at some of these charts. They're ready to go. Uh, Amazon... Uh, again, it's it's back to back days rejected at the five day moving average. If Amazon can just start reclaiming the five day moving average, take a look, man. This is this looks great, right? This looks really good. If this thing starts reclaiming uh, the five day, this thing can go. Uh, look at Zoom. I still like it. Again, was again not a you know it's not going to be obvious to a lot of people, but you can see it, the same thing as Amazon got rejected off the five day moving average. Back to back days. If this just if this whole supply zone. And again, who knows if it's going to happen tomorrow or maybe not. But if this supply zone can reclaim, you know, Zoom can make a run uh, ahead of earnings. Obviously, Tesla now we're looking for a higher level uh, with this little screw up today. But again, it is what it is. Such as life. You know, trading is not fair. Life is not fair. Sometimes your actions are not fair. But again, it is what it is. Uh, but keep an eye on that. Uh, Square, big, beautiful breakout today. Again, we'll get into the individual pivots in a second. Uh, again, any dip tomorrow, if we get a, any uh, weaker open tomorrow, any dip tomorrow into the rising 60-minute support. And if it starts reclaiming today's action, you can see 
6571. Uh, big call buying came in on the stock uh, all day. So really, really good, strong continuation potential uh, for tomorrow. Even Crocs, like look at a stock like Crocs, right? Again, I have never wore a pair of Crocs, but apparently it's all the rage, right? So Crocs looks really good. It's, you know, one day away of confirming this Bollinger Band. Uh, this looks good as well. So we're kind of set up. Is it, you know, are we set up everywhere? Absolutely not. Uh, maybe tomorrow you might see a little bit of weakness. Uh, Texas Instruments, which again, uh, is going to be a dominant factor tomorrow because again, it represents chips, right? It had a, you know, looks like a crappy reaction to earnings and chips and dips, or at least chips, uh, you know, all the semiconductors of the world, they make up a pretty aggressive part of the NASDAQ 100. Uh, not a lot of them are really getting beat up today on the sympathy to the Texas Instruments. But again, it doesn't mean they won't get beat up tomorrow. So we'll be a little bit curious to see if we do get a down open, maybe we can get some of our favorite plays on the rising 60 minute support. And if they trap there, you know, you can get a pretty good uh, pretty good entry uh, until the, the channel uh, confirms. So let's, again, let's talk about today's day. Again, ironically, the one I cheated on, right? The one I cheated on, the one I try to get super cute on was the one that uh, obviously bit me in the tush. So let's talk about uh, today's uh, today's day. Square was an absolute monster. Again, you started seeing uh, very, very big uh, 255, 260 weeklies coming in very aggressively, one after another after another. And Square broke out. Uh, not only did it take out this whole channel here that we talked about last night, it took out this macro area of 255 and traded all the way up to 258.5. Super move on Square. Uh, I know a lot of you guys still have runners going in tomorrow. This looks really, really good uh, for continuation move. Uh, NVIDIA actually saved me today, right? Um, you know, if it, man, if it wasn't for Tesla, I would have done so well. Um, it, the, the point is, Again, and I'm still fuming inside. I'll, I'll move on. I'm moving on. Uh, NVIDIA, again, continues to be good. Yesterday, it rested first day after the split. Uh, today was its first adjusted uh, trading day. And here is NVIDIA. 189 needs to build. Uh, this has a bunch of steps before it breaks the downtrend. But again, at least it needs to reclaim the 189 area, which is, again, what we talked about earlier and yesterday and for years and years and years, the five-day moving average. And NVIDIA went absolutely uh, bananas, it absolutely went bananas. So it took out the 89 and traded right to the 10 day moving average at 195. I still like it for tomorrow. Again, assuming uh, Texas Instruments doesn't pull everything down. Listen, if, if NVIDIA uh, can wake up, I mean, if, if, it could, if it could hold today's channel and confirm, maybe get another uh, day out of it. So it looks good there. So definitely uh, saved me today. Uh, Zoom, we're still watching. Uh, nothing there. Uh, NTLA, unfortunately, I didn't get a piece of this NTLA. I just stopped watching. It was just super thin for me today. Uh, but for you guys took it, man, congratulations. This is a huge move. We talked about it last night in the video. Unfortunately, just way too thin for me. Uh, 146.80, uh, 147 needs to confirm the 10-day NTLA. Man, it went nuts. Uh, NTLA went nuts. Again, here's the 10-day moving average yesterday. It confirmed that 47 level and traded all the way up to 153.60. Big move. It still has more upside uh, to go. Uh, Apple uh, needs to reclaim 147.20 and never came close to confirming. Had a res day today. Uh, Roku, if you guys remember Roku, that was a 411 pivot yesterday. It traded up to that 420 and a half level yesterday and reclaimed 421 today. And yada, 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 Roku had a nice second day run uh, all the way up to the 425 level. Again, now it needs to reclaim 425 uh, to see the mid 30s. Uh, so Roku is, again, a little bit thin, but it is what it is. Square, uh, nice move there. I like Amazon. It didn't confirm today. Uh, Google did, right? 2542 uh, needs to build. We saw 2570 weekly call buyers step in. So here is the channel on Google. Right, 2542, right? It took out this whole 2542 and closed right at the highs uh, into this uh, 2552 area. Google looks higher tomorrow. Just needs to confirm uh, this whole channel here. So Google was fine. Uh, again, 194.30 one, one, is a 10 day. This was, uh, this was uh, uh, NVIDIA. Uh, Microsoft, nice push out of the channel. Today. You're gonna see, again, that's the theme. You're gonna see a lot of names coming out of the channels. Uh, Microsoft needs that new 281 base, really nice move into the close and reclaim that 81, right? So here is the 81, the five day moving average. It confirmed that 81 closed right at the highs, uh, 281.50 is obviously uh, more upside tomorrow if it confirms today's channel. 
And I believe that is it, right? 152 on deck, 256 all time high. So the moral of the story is folks, this business is gonna throw a lot of stuff at you mentally, right? It's gonna put you to test. It's gonna do everything possible to separate you from your money. Don't help it, right? Don't help it. Be a better friend to yourself. I know discipline and, and, and the emotions are the hardest part of this business. But even for myself, I'm doing this for 22 years. I'm 47 years old. And you'll still have that moment that you just don't know for your ass from your elbow. And unfortunately, it's going to make you make a mental mistake. And probably than not, more chance than not, 99 out of 100 percent, that mental mistake will always cost you at the end. Guys, stay disciplined, stay focused, stay blessed. I'll see you tomorrow.